Hey guys, I just wanted to take a quick moment to ask for your help. With what I've been able to do in a short amount of time, I feel like this podcast should be recognized as a top quality art podcast. So, with that in mind, I've decided to nominate the Postmodern Art Podcast into the 16th Annual People's Choice Podcast Awards. The Podcast Awards are a global award ceremony honoring the best podcasts as voted by you, the people. Several amazing podcasts have won in the past, like WTF with Mark Marin, 30 for 30 Podcast, and The BS Report. Also, Chris Jericho hosted the 10th Annual Ceremony, so I, I find that pretty cool. I've nominated the podcast in the arts category, obviously, and I need your help to make sure we secure the nomination. From now until July 31st, you can sign up at podcastawards.com and vote for the Postmodern Art Podcast for free. If enough people vote, we can be a part of the official slate announced in August and be in the running to win the Arts Award and be a part of a historic group of art podcasts like Dad's Drinking Bourbon, the, the Beerus Podcast. We like drinking? Wait. They've had to be like some of the first winners when this is starting out, right? Hold on. Those are the winners for the past five years? Is that what this podcast is missing? I had to get drunk? I. No. No, no, no. No, this won't do. No, we. We need an art podcast to win the art podcast award. This needs to be a podcast made for the arts. Hashtag for the arts. Make that trending. Look, in all seriousness, I'm sure Dad's Drinking Bourbon has a great podcast, and I'm sure they probably talk about art in one aspect or another. But I honestly feel like this podcast has made leaps and bounds since I first started this in September of last year. And I would love to see it recognized as one of the best that could potentially be out there. If nothing else, maybe the recognition could help bring more sponsors to the podcast. And then I could be able to turn around and make more amazing content for you guys. So, if you want to help make this podcast more than what it already is and make it something absolutely amazing, go to podcastawards.com, sign up for free, nominate the podcast, Keep voting and get the word out there as much as possible. We need to have an art podcast win the Art Podcast Award. So vote for the 16th Annual People's Choice Podcast Awards today. Postmodern Art Podcast, the podcast dedicated to giving artists who are wowing the world over the platform they deserve. I am your host, Nathan Raglan, and today's episode, well, it is special. Today we have George Edwards, a UK-based animator with work on Hasbun Hotel and some reanimation projects with his own outstanding ideas in the pipeline, ready to be revealed. This was a lovely chat that I was glad to have with him. I know you all will enjoy as much as I did, especially when he talks about his short film that should be debuting soon, Puppet, the Nightmare Elf. Make sure you support him and all the links to his stuff below. You can also support the podcast by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to the podcast to see more on sensational artists all over the world. You can also support the podcast by going to pmap.creator-spring.com to buy merch, a good chunk of the items supporting LGBTQ plus charities. And if you want a place to talk about the podcast and be with like-minded fellows who love it, join the Apocalypse Podcast Network Discord server, where you can talk more about this podcast and other amazing podcasts in the network. In fact, let's hear about another flabbergasting podcast in the Apocalypse Podcast Network. 
Hey there, Robo fans and Dino fans. Do you like science fiction? Do you like movies about robots and dinosaurs? Do you like podcasts that explore sci-fi philosophy through a fun and positive lens? Then you are going to love Robots vs. Dinosaurs. Every week, your host, Louis G, invites a guest onto the show to talk about one of their favorite sci-fi movies. It's a Robocast. It's a Dinocast. It's a battle for ultimate awesomeness in science fiction pop culture. Subscribe to Robots vs. Dinosaurs on Apple, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. New episodes every Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Robos v. Dinos or Twitter at Versus Robots. That is at VS Robots. And now, without further ado, please enjoy the Postmodern Art Podcast. Hello. Hello. There we go. How are we doing? Doing wonderful. About yourself? Getting by. It's absolutely boiling. <laughs> I my plants are burning on the windowsill. Oh really? <laughs> That's how hot it is. Jesus. Yeah. I've, I've had to close the windows because I'm living. I'm living, but on the main roads so of the traffic, just so loud. So. <laughs> oh, that but, uh, I, I don't. I'll survive. survive. I'll survive. I've got my wine glass full of coke. That'll, 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 that'll uh, keep me going. Just, I'm sorry. Just reminds it, it me. Of that, it just reminds me of that classic vine. Just you know, Pepsi bottle or Pepsi glass bottle of coke. I don't give a damn. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the vibe we're going for. That's the vibe we're going for, which I appreciate. Uh, so oh, yeah. There we go. Wonderful. Beautiful, gorgeous, stunning. Love it. Um, <laughs> there we go. I was going to say, no, I know it's it's hot for you, but like, I, you know, I've said many times before, it's probably, it's, it's, it's been hot. It's been hot. I think just everywhere. Yeah. It's just been hot. What, what, what state are you in? Uh, Georgia. So East Coast. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Do you guys have like automatic, like, air con like built into your houses because i know that in some states that's like isn't it a law in some states i don't know if it's a law in some states i know ours came with one but like you know it's i don't know if it's it's one of those like if you can afford it which most people can't afford it it's it's, yeah. it's also but like it's not necessarily law that you have to have one yeah fair enough which, okay. which which sucks for a lot of people because you know with how minimum wage is here and all that kind of stuff it, it's very hard for some people to get by i've i've been hearing a lot of awful things about like just an american like you know just system with like paying you know their employees and everything i'm just like you know, like, don't get me wrong. I, was gonna say, I love you know, I love the country, but it's really put me off, you know, ever wanting to like, you know, come over to like, you know, live. Well, so I'm like, how could I possibly live? Well, I mean, <laughs> I I'm sure you've probably heard this a million times before, but let me put it like this. It's one of those like the minimum minimum wage for the longest time until recently with a lot of states. The minimum wage tend to stay around like the same area, which is like seven fifty an hour, eight dollars an hour, something like that. But the cost of living has kept going up and up on a yearly basis. So it's one of those like yeah. it, it hasn't really compensated well. But yet the lawmakers are, are the you know people that are paid for by the executives, and the executives still want to get their money one way or another. And the best way to do that is to shorthand the employees. Although the employees are starting to fight back, and they're starting to become changes to where it's now like fifteen an hour for the very bare minimum. But at the mm. same time, like it's still like a long way to go before we get to that on a universal basis yeah yeah uh i just want money money would be <laughs> well i mean to be fair with what you're going for i'm sure you wouldn't be paid minimum if you were to come to america because animation is at least a little bit more like lauded i guess it's a lot more prized but at the same time like you've also heard all the horror stories from all the animation studios trying to get like internships and all this other bs yeah yeah, I mean, you know, with all that considered, nothing compares to how awful I've heard. You know, it is in Japan. Oh, God. oh, you think Japan? You, know, you think Japan's bad? I talked to I had previous guests from the Philippines, Kihori, um, and like I don't know if you've seen that episode, but 
there were times where the studio that she was working with, she would only get paid 50 bucks a week. Yeah, like, the, there's, there's something wrong there, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Well, I mean, to be like, fair, in, in other places compared to, like, here or UK or whatnot, there's not very strict labor laws, so they can get away with that shit. Yeah, well, actually, uh, like, my mother, she's a nurse. She works uh, for the NHS, and a lot of the staff she works for are from the Philippines, and they come over and they earn, you know, British, like, you know, like, wages, which, you know, isn't, you know, net, even though they're, you know risking their lives with the pandemic and everything and you know she's had people die that she's known it's still you know not the best it could be but that money is like compared to what they would earn back home is like you know like a, a fortune and then yeah. they and they so they, they send a load of money back which you know is a good tactic you know be That's capitalism <laughs> be capitalism yeah. there you go <laughs> I think I just found the title yeah. of this podcast. No, I'm joking. Me and you, we're going to be taking down capitalism. There you go. In the next hour. <laughs> the next hour or so. Uh, here we go. Is this your first time appearing on a podcast? Yeah, it is. I mean, I've done like, uh, I've done like Zoom calls, like, you know, like talks and lectures and everything. So sort of similar. And, you know, I've done a few like Twitch streams with friends, but. It's uh, a bit different, I but mean, yeah. I, oh, mean, yeah, yeah I, I was going to say, I totally get it. It's one of those, you know, this is a, it, like dedicated to a podcast instead of a Twitch stream that eventually becomes like a video or something like that later on. I get that. <laughs> there we yes. Go. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Nervous? <laughs> oh. Bit of both, yeah. But, uh. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, what if I say something horrendous accidentally and get cancelled? If anyone says horrendous, it's probably going to be me, so you're safe on your end. It'll probably be golden in comparison. <laughs> oh. By the way, I do want to also say thank you so much for the, the love and support you've given lately to the podcast. Like, trust me, I, I see that stuff on social media and stuff, and I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. No, it's no problem at all. I think it's really cool, you know, given, you know, your you know, putting a spotlight on a lot of people that definitely deserve it. Like I've seen a lot of my, a lot of people I know, you know, yeah. like, you know, through it, you know, and they've come on the podcast and, you know, it's, it's been great, you know, just hearing their perspective and everything. It's yeah. been great. I mean, that, that was the goal of the podcast in the first place, just trying to give a platform to these artists that are doing incredible stuff that just also might be happening to, you know, do other incredible stuff as well. Like they have their own incredible stuff as well. Like, you with you know puppet i cannot wait to delve headfirst into that because by god that that looks gorgeous more than anything else well um i've just uh i've been working with the sound design and everything i should we should have it finished today Ooh. so in the next couple of days i might do a little thing on youtube like premiere it little thing. okay okay i respect that i respect that <laughs> <laughs> there you go oh one last yes. one last thing i wanted to ask i did realize when i was looking at your profile and stuff trying to do my research such are you based in wales yes i am my my older brother went over to wales like years ago for a church mission trip so yeah 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 it is warm over here right now <laughs> i think we were at the beginning but yeah <laughs> No, yeah, it's, it's one of those like I saw that and I'm like, oh, so there's that connection. Awesome. <laughs> we love it. We love to see it. There you go. There you go. All right, George, before we get started, I must ask the icebreaker question to ask for every single podcast. What is your most unpopular art opinion? Hmm. Well, I'm just going to go. The earth is definitely flat. <laughs> but, you know, no doubt in my mind. No. Oh, uh, well. Oh. Hmm. I've got, like... Uh, well, I, I saw a thing um, the other day on Twitter, like, I definitely agreed with. Um, with. So, like, you know, if you go to art school or whatever, you know, the, you know, the tutors and everything, and they, 
they sort of there's sort of like a gatekeeping like mentality. Is like I can always remember. Um, I went. I did a course. Uh, it's like a foundation, like art, basic thing. It was great. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Fantastic time there. Made loads of friends. The, t- the tutors were fantastic, but like uh, there was just sort of like this mentality, like um, especially with uh, the the group that I was put in. So we did like visual communication, like graphics, illustration. Uh, that's what we specialize in because obviously I did animation, got friends, did illustration, graphics. And then there were other sections like photography, fashion, uh, and fine art. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it was it was almost like uh, like <laughs> they were almost like looked down at us. They were like, "Oh, the weebs." <laughs> that's, that's essentially how, how they saw us. They were like, and uh, <laughs> Jesus. and one, one of the, one of the tutors, like whenever we went in for life drawing, they were like, "No anime eyes, please." <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay. And like you know, we weren't we weren't even doing anything intentionally, but because obviously we were so prone to like, because obviously we did like loads of like little cartoon like stuff like that. If like a character had like and like eyes that were like maybe like a millimeter too wide, they're like no anime, not in my class, go away. Uh, <laughs> but um no, um but yeah, going back to this uh, post I saw, and they said you know. A lot of people, you know, say, you know, that there are lots of rules to it, which, you know, to an extent there are. But, you know, if you're having fun, you know, I see, I think, you know, that's the point of it. Like, you know, that's why a lot of people do what they do. I mean, I don't know where that's an unpopular opinion, but, yeah, I think that a lot of people like to gatekeep it uh, yeah. like that, saying it's like... You, you're not doing real art unless you're suffering for it. That's why it's called painting. Painting. I saw that quote a while ago. But yeah, that was uh, that was something. I had never heard that quote before, so thank you for enlightening me on that one. But yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're talking about at the end of the day. More or less just, you know, hey, you know, yes, there might be some rules, there might be some parameters, but at the end of the day, there shouldn't be, like, a limit on how an art piece should be. You should just enjoy art at the end of the day. Am I Am I right? In saying that, uh, absolutely. There you go. There you uh, go. Yeah, definitely. All right. I mean, I, I say elaborate, but I think you've done that and then some. So, with that being the case, you know, again, art shouldn't be gatekept or and shouldn't be limited by rules. Is that a hill that you're willing to die on? Yeah. All right. Shouldn't then. be limited. Then. Yeah. And then with that, I cannot think of a better way to start the Postmodern Art Podcast. Welcome everyone, I am your host Nathan Raglan. Uh, feel free to subscribe or follow whatever streaming platform you prefer. I am a part of the Apocalypse Podcast Network. Go to ApocalypsePodcastNetwork.com to see more about this podcast and other amazing ones in this network. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at PostModArtPod for future updates and guest announcements, including today's guest. <laughs> oh Jesus, that was a bad one. Uh... <laughs> He is a UK-based animator with work on Hasman Hotel and several reanimation projects under his belt, plus some original content he'd love to share. Welcome to the podcast, Lizard Enthusiast, George Edwards! How are you doing today? Awful. Terrible. <laughs> disgusting. All right. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am doing wonderful, and I'm actually getting a chance to sit down. Chat is, you know, you and I have been going back and forth a little bit, and, you know, trying to figure out how we want to go forward with this thing, but... I'm excited to see how this is going to go, nevertheless. But before we really divulge into the stuff that you've made, I want to go back just a little bit. I want to know the origin stories of Ed, more or less. What got you interested in art and animation in the first place? Well, you know, that it's. I think, you know, it's the same with, like, a lot of artists. You know, when you're little, you're just drawing, you know, you're scribbling. And, like, in school, when the teacher's saying something, you're just, like, not paying the slightest bit of attention, just drawing little sketches in the back of your book, you know, that's, you know, more or less it with, uh, you know, how it started. But, you know, it wasn't until I was in, uh, like, secondary school, which is, like, I don't know how, how it's, like, set, like, how it's, like, would that be in, Would that be US. about, like, year six, seven, eight, somewhere in that general age seven, area? Seven, eight, nine, okay. ten, yeah, something like that. Um, that I really like uh, 
sort of like you know animation as like a career path just started to like you know sort of like i started to get the idea of that like a lot of um so like we used to have uh this it was like stupid animation software on like one of the computers in the classroom <laughs> called pivot animation which was like the little stick figure and you get to move it i mean my friends you know lovely day outside much like today everyone else is outside having fun and we're just in this dark depressing room just like making a little stick figure move and to us that was like the the greatest thing in the world and um a lot of like the influences back then for me were like you know a lot of Oni, it's so, like Oni NG on you. Like I, I found his stuff on YouTube, okay. and then Harry Partridge, Psychic Pebbles, Tom Scott, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I watched all that and I thought, oh my god, I could, you know, and you know, my friends was like, oh my god, we could do stuff like that, and great. But then my friends like, yeah, cool. And of course, they'd never do it. So <laughs> it's it's a classic case of yeah, I'll do that, and then no, they just go off and do something else. But uh, you know, that was something that I always wanted to do was just like make, make little short cartoon, you know, just jokes and stuff like that. It wasn't really until um, I finished at that school that I like re- I was like really dead set on like right animation is what I want to do. Um, and I, I, I can't believe it didn't really click, you know, a lot sooner because, you know, I had all this, like, th- I was, like, completely blown away by all these, uh, by all these little, like, cartoons and shorts and just stupid little skits on YouTube. But, um, yeah, it wasn't re- really until, like, you know, I sat down and watched some of, like, the older, like, Disney movies. Mm-hmm. And like, especially like you know, like the villains and everything, and the way that they were animated and everything that I just thought was really, you know, just fantastic. Like you know, uh, uh, Captain Hook, Ursula from The Little Mermaid, Maleficent, and all that. And I was just like, right, I want to do that. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, it was either that. It was it was really weird because <laughs> um, I had like before I like really animation really clicked for me i did wasn't really sure what i wanted to do so it was either filmmaker or prison guard those were my two <laughs> career options one second time, I time, time out. i just want to know like what was about prison guard that got you interested more than anything i can understand filmmaker but prison guard is the one that's got me like questioning like what in the world i honestly can't remember i think i must have watched hot fuzz once and i was like <laughs> oh my god i want to be i want to be nicholas angel uh, <laughs> like that i don't know I, like it's just something every now and again i just remember it was like why did i want that <laughs> like that <laughs> i mean i mean in your defense i'm currently a forklift operator so it's, uh, it's not too far off the beaten path of going something that isn't necessarily art <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but back to what I you're saying like for you, back to what you're saying you were debating between like filmmaker or prison guard and I guess you never really, you never realized that animator was a path until a certain point. Yeah, it didn't really click for me, and like, like I said, like, yeah, it just didn't click for me until you know, just like as I was finishing school, and you know, and throughout all throughout the summer, then I was buying sketchbooks and just you know, looking to improve you know my drawings and everything. I've actually got an entire shelf right here of like Ooh. all my older sketchbooks. I was just flicking through before. Uh, Let's see, I've got to be honest. I just this, this stuff is just cringe. <laughs> like we all got to start somewhere, man. <laughs> like, this, like this was like 2014, like 13, 14. You know, and I was oh, just drawing stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's like weird. Like you know, I took a lot of like inspiration like, from like Disney villains. There's definitely like some Jafar, Doctor Facilier sort of like thing going on there i can't really remember i, I mean and then you know they... stuff like that but yeah no and just looking at this pit this the sketchbook now and just looking at like the stuff i'm doing now like i'm quite happy with uh you know just how i'm coming along i've got a long way to go you know, i will admit yeah you know there are lots of things you know i want to work on like you know just building up and everything but, you know, I'll get 
I mean, we we we've so, yeah. we, we've established basically towards the start. It's one of those you're learning something every day. I mean, you're never. I, I guess an artist never truly is like, you know, settled or whatnot. They're always learning something new. They're always picking up on something to help improve their art more than anything else. And I mean, based yeah. on what I've seen from your stuff, you've definitely come quite a long way. You know, from you know those pages. No offense, those are still really good. They're a lot better than anything I could pull off. I will tell you that right now. But. <laughs> Uh, that's straight. It's fine. <laughs> Tell me. It's fine. I mean, okay. I, it's a, it's a good, try. is a good foundation for the art, basically leading you, leading you to where you are right now. And where you are right now is basically having your hands in all sorts of different aspects. But going back just a little bit, one of the biggest aspects that was kind of more or less thrusting you into like the art workspace. More or less, is your uh, work on is your work on Hasbin Hotel uh, as a cleanup oh, animator? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. As a what? Sorry. As a cleanup animator? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. There yeah. You go. Uh, how, how did the opportunity come to you? It was wild. Like I, I was, uh, I was coming to my to the end of my first year at uh, university. Like oh wow. I, you know, in, in my head, you know, I was just like, oh, I want to, you know, work for Cartoon Network and everything. Because at the time, you know, Steven Universe was at, was at its peak and, you know, Adventure Time. And I think regular show had just ended. I think it was then. I can't remember. Uh, but, yeah, and I was just because I had made a Twitter account, like, in 2016. And I hadn't used it, like, like at all you know, properly, and, you know, I just started, like, looking through Twitter and everything, and uh, I just saw a, it was just a, a call for cleanup artists, and it was from Viv Vivsy Pop, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember, like, a few years prior, like, because, you know, when I, when I started, you know, looking at animation as, like, a career option, and I just remember going through YouTube and seeing, like, a lot of people had made like my top 10 favorite youtube animators and all my top 10 favorite animators and uh yeah and like and on almost like all of them you know she was definitely within like the top five three or you know one you know and you know i she she always you know the, the work there you know i was just like i it was always on my radar and you know i i, I saw a lot of her work you know I, I checked her channel every now and again and I saw all these little animation tests that I really liked and I just thought, give it a go. Yeah. And uh yeah, I just it was a lot it was a lot easier. Well I wouldn't say easy, you know, but like it was a lot more because I now because um, you know, of how of how big, you know, has been became and of course hell of a boss right now, you know, everyone wants Everyone wants to, uh, you know, work, everyone wants to work, work for Viv Viv Pop. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, back then, um, I think I, I was like, hey, I saw you needed clean up um, animators. You know, I'd be happy to. And she said, oh, yeah, um, that would be awesome. Have you got any examples of uh, your work? And uh, I think the best I had at the time was like, I had just, I had just finished it uh former university was just sort of like this it was like a five second like the full assignment of the first year to do like a five second like pass performance with like boss dialogue and uh yeah it was like five seconds of a character uh, out and saying something and uh i sent it to her and she was like yeah that's cool you're in <laughs> i was like what <laughs> so she uh gave me the nda to sign and everything and she threw me into the production server and uh where i met like a lot of really close friends you know looking back from a few years i've made a lot of friends that i worked on worked with on that on on the project mm -hmm. and everything it's, it's just wild how you know just by chance seeing that uh that uh tweet you know and it's just uh you know, it made a big impact. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, and I just remember, yeah, because um, she sent me all this stuff, and it, I think about at the time it was about 1 a.m. that night, and I think I spent the entire night just, like, she was like, okay, here's, um, here's a shot I want you to work on. And I was like, oh, okay. And uh, 
I was looking at it, and I think as I was uh, looking at the, this uh, shot, I was just like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like... Obviously, like I was, I was brand new. I, I didn't quite know, like you know, all the ins and outs of what I had to do. So I think with, I think I made a line and then exported it and sent it to her. And, uh, <laughs> it was just like, it's just, you know, I, I must, you know, I admit I'm a pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> so I apologise, Vivian, if you're watching. I'm sorry, I was such an ass. I'm sorry, <laughs> just so annoying, um, and. <laughs> I I I just, I just remember like she was like oh that looks great but I will change oh could you change this please and I think like the first time she's like oh can you change this please and in my head I'm just like oh my god she hates me <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no I I learned an awful lot work working uh, with all these artists and you know we all helped each other and we all yeah we all just inspired each other and it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yes. And uh yeah, and I, I could definitely see like the improvement in my own work, you know, working through the summer then on that. Oh, yeah. Uh working throughout my second year in uni just doing that and I still managed to uh, get all my work done for uni as well, so I'm quite happy for that about that. Thank you. I did a terrible job, but you know, it did it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's better than uh, substance. Some just probably wouldn't have been able by. to get it done. <laughs> yeah, I just about got by with that, you know. I, I mean, hey, it's not like you were kicked out or anything like that. But I mean, nevertheless, like you know, trust me, I've had, I've had several people that have worked on you know Hasbun Hotel and Hell of a Boss, and like knowing the kind of atmosphere that's kind of presented there with all these incredible artists more than anything else. Like I can only imagine, like it was basically like osmosis for you at a certain point. Just like, you know, getting to see all these other artists, seeing how they do their stuff and just like working with them, collaborating with them. Like, I can only imagine how much of an experience that was more than anything else. It was, it was wild, you know, because um, I think when I joined, you know, it was, it was like, a f it was like a few months uh, into actual production of the episode. So there still wasn't like as big a team mm -hmm. and you know as i worked and everything i just saw you know these people come into the server and they were people that i had like seen their work on online and it was just stuff that had like really influenced me and that was i think that was like the biggest thing of all to me is that I, I i was working with these artists who i'd like looked up to and they all just they were just all in in there and uh yeah um I completely forgot what I was going to say, but yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I, and I got to meet quite a few, quite a few of them then as well, uh, which was, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I just, I, I thought it, it all came full circle because, um, I started my third year of uni then and, uh, it was around about September, yeah, definitely. It was, yeah, of course, September. It's when <laughs> everything starts back. And, uh, yeah, so it was a month away until uh, screening of uh, Has Been. So we were getting all the finishing touches done. And I went back to the first shot I had done mm -hmm. for Has Been. And I was looking at it and I was like, I can't look at this anymore. Vivian, can I please, please change it? And she was like, okay. Uh, okay, of course, yeah. Um, and, yeah. And that shot was the bane of my life for, you know, the whole time I was there. But I'm very happy, you know, looking back, you know, I'm glad I changed things. And, uh, yeah, it was great. And, uh, yeah. And then the month after, uh, they were doing, uh, like, an early, sc an early screening in Los Angeles uh, for everyone who worked on it and all their, you know, like, everyone, you know, and all their friends involved and everything. So I thought... Hey ho, let's 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 give it a bash. And uh, I uh, booked uh, plane plane tickets, and I went to LA, and that was uh, that was an experience. I was gonna say that must have been a culture yeah. shock more than anything else. Well, it was it was the first time I'd ever like gone away on my own. Yeah, yeah. So it was terrifying, but it was 
fantastic. I can, I can, like I've said this to everyone, like about it. Um, so yeah, I was completely fine. Like I wasn't anxious till I was really excited and uh, about twenty six hours the journey. Yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> didn't sleep at all on the plane because I was just sort of like wedged between these giant people, just sort of like sleeping, going. <clears throat> And I was just like, oh. <laughs> so I just watched, I watched Beetlejuice like three or four times, and then the Iron Giant, and I was fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got a got into a taxi, and then I could see the skyline of, of uh, Los Angeles like in the distance. It was dark, so it was all the lights and everything. And for whatever reason, I was completely fine until I saw that, oh. and I was like. Oh my god, I'm gonna die in this city. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what is this? I'm terrified. Um but yeah, and then I got to uh the Airbnb that uh me and a few of the crew members uh uh had booked together and it was uh yeah, it was a few of us and a few people I had uh, admired beforehand. Okay. I had seen their work. It was wild that you know I was I was just vibing with them for a few days in an apart in an apartment. You know that was cool. They were they were all fantastic, and you know we all got to get got along really well. And I bear, bear in mind it was like LA heat. Yeah, because I I had gone from October time in Cardiff, really damp, like horrible freezing cold. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, oh, fucking hell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And I was exhausted as well, because I think I had actually managed this. I was sitting down in the lobby of this really sketchy B&B, just sort of like, okay, I'm going to go upstairs, I'm showering, I'm going to sleep. And they came in, they were just like, all right, what up? We're going to go have lunch with the entire team. And I was just like, okay. Get up, that's right. <laughs> so we got up, got sorted, and we went to this, uh, yeah, uh, a Mexican restaurant. And I just sort of I just staggered in behind them all, and like I could see everyone sitting at this huge table. And I think it dawned on me there. I was like, oh my god, they're all real. <laughs> <laughs> like I had all only like you know communicated to them through the internet, right? And then I saw them all like. Oh my god, they're all real human beings. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say? Uh, <laughs> Good Lord. But um, yeah, that was uh, that was definitely you know funny experience. Um, yeah, and I got to meet meet. Uh, I think yeah, you had Dave on the podcast, yes, and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he was hilarious. I met uh, obviously I met everyone. You know, throughout the days, Viv- Vivian was really nice. She came over and was like, "Hey, are you, uh, hey, are you George?" I was like, "Yeah," and it was great. She was uh, because she was she was chatting about the boss because uh, I think the only thing I had actually seen of it was one GIF mm-hmm. and like some like promo art. So I didn't know what it was, and she was saying, "Oh, it's really great. I've got," and it was just re- she was really nice about it. Uh, Michael Kovach did uh, like some really realistic baby noises, which after 26, 27, 27 hours of traveling, I really didn't appreciate. So I went over and told him accordingly. Michael, and like he didn't know it was the first interaction like we had had, and he didn't know who I. I don't think he knew at first who I was. Yeah. So like all he saw was this big British man just come over to him and say, "Stop that." I, I hate it, and he was just like, oh. but uh, <laughs> but then uh, yeah, no, it was fine after that, and uh, yeah, uh, next few few nights we we had the screening. Everyone uh, went there. We we're all dressing posh and everything, and uh, no, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah, getting to see everyone. Yeah. It's brilliant. I mean that that at the end of the day, like that's just a, a great experience from start to finish. Like getting to work on this incredible thing, getting to meet everyone, being part of such an amazing crew more than anything else. Like it, it's the thing that I bet a lot of people, when they get in this industry, can only dream of. And the fact that you got to experience that on your first paid gig, nevertheless, on your first true experience in the industry, nevertheless, has to be like one of the most surreal moments for you more than anything else. Yeah, I mean. Let's face it, I, I suppose I peaked. 
<laughs> that is not true. That is not true. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was. It, I. It still blows me away just how you know. So I, well, I was very lucky to you know be able to get the chance to just work on this project, and I just. I, I can. I just remember we were all sitting down. I think it was the day before the screening, and, and uh, we had had a like an entire like section of like this restaurant booked, and we were all sitting there, and you know people were coming in, and yeah, it was just uh, so like Brock Baker came in, the voice uh, actor Brock Baker, yeah, and like thirteen year old me was obsessed. With weird dust he would do like it would really annoy my friend like all my friends i would just constantly quote like and, and just show like his <laughs> to everyone to the point where they were all sick of me and then all of a sudden this man who <laughs> like you know just the man that i knew from like all those years ago just watching his videos he just uh he just came in and i was just like oh my god no <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm not ready <laughs> And of course, there was Elsie Lovelock and every and everything. Uh, she, you know, I've been watching like her videos, like all of her covers of all these Disney songs and uh, mm-hmm. all of her voice acting work. That was fantastic. Um, I got to meet Maxwell Atoms as well. Who? Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, that must have been uh, something for him. <laughs> Just because uh, uh, no one like because. Uh, yeah, he came in and he had like this like stripy like suit on, like Beetlejuice sort of like esque like yeah. suit. Talk to everyone, and one of the people I was staying with just came over to me and said, "That's Maxwell Adams." And then like my entire world around me just sort of like stopped, and I was like, "Oh my god, this man made my favorite show." <laughs> and then and then like we just sort of like locked eyes, and I was like, "Hello, nice to meet you." And he's and <laughs> like he's like. Hello. <laughs> it's just, it was just like, it was, I just like cringe going back to it because I must, it must have been, he's just looking over and this, this man is just like, hello, yes, I, you made my childhood and I'm, oh God. But yeah, no, uh, that was fantastic. I, he was a really nice guy. But yeah, like, you know, it does, you know, I do think back at it, you know, from like, you know, five years five, six years ago, and if you had told me, like, I'd been able to have, you know, seen all these, you know, amazing people that, like, I'd looked up to, you know, that would have just blown me away. But, yeah. I I was going to say, trust me, I know exactly what you're talking about when it comes to, like, meeting the people that basically built your childhood. I actually had, what was it, the director of one of my favorite shows on the podcast. guy's name was Joe Horn. Um, Like, having him on the podcast and the years of experience or whatnot, and, like, Realizing I'm talking to the person that helped build up my childhood, more or less. Like, I got to do it over a Discord call. You got to meet them in person. I envy you, my good sir, okay? <laughs> yeah. You never say never. You might meet him in person one day. I, hopefully this podcast goes somewhere. I might be able yeah. to meet more of these people in person. <laughs> but You uh, know, let, let's get it to trending, number one. And then, you know... <laughs> <laughs> PMAP number one, yeah. hashtag for the arts, yeah. all that stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah. but nevertheless, like going through that entire experience with the Hasbun Hotel and stuff, like I can only imagine how surreal it is. But obviously, stuff like that couldn't last exactly forever, and you had to keep going. You had to keep going with your education more than anything else, and keep going with animation, or I guess in a sense, reanimation, because you've had your hand in a couple of reanimation projects how exactly what was exactly the first one that grabbed your attention when it comes to reanimation well i i, I definitely i'd seen a lot of um you know maybe chores like you know take part in them and i just you know it was sort of like a new thing to me and i just thought oh what's this this is uh this is uh, an interesting one uh and i uh yeah and then i i think there was yeah the courage of the cowardly dog uh, they would have reanimated a version of uh, the Freaky Fred episode, mm-hmm. and uh, I'd seen I'd seen quite a few like episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog, and I remember that one definitely sticking out to me. Like it was sort of like a thing. Whenever I used to go over to my grandparents, they were the only ones with like the the, the channels to like, <laughs> actually watch it. 
so like that's where I'd go to watch Cartoon Network and everything and I just remember you know watching that so I thought I'd uh you know I thought you know and uh you know we still had a VHS player so you know they just recorded it all off Cartoon Network and I just used to watch it all on repeat when I got home I loved my VHS players like I used I I, I like I think I still have a, a few of like the Disney ones just yeah. just worn out <laughs> They wouldn't play now, but we just keep it for sentimental value. I was gonna say, uh, I, I know yeah. my mom has a good chunk of them that are like still in their like original case or whatnot. Like I'm the one that comes to mind is like Tarzan. I know we have that one on VHS, but um, but anyways, yeah. but yeah, like basically having the you know those VHS more or less like and having words are wonderful, aren't they? Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but basically going back to your story talking about like you know again you, you've seen like Courage the Cowardly Dog before you definitely had you know some of them saved up or whatnot. I guess that kind of led you to have your interest peaked in this Freaky Fred reanimated yeah definitely and uh yeah uh, um I wish I had like been a bit more active on there cause um <laughs> I'm with some servers, I don't know what it is. Like in some servers, I'm really active, and then some just sort of like go to the wayside. And like I, I feel so bad because there were there were so many really you know creative people in there. It would have been great to like chat with them. So if I could go back, I think it was just like because when I when I applied, you know, it was crunch time at uni yeah. and everything. I didn't really have much time for anything else, and of course I had um, clean up work to do and everything. So um, yeah, but uh, I I'm, I've I managed to get around to it uh, then a few months into uh, into it and uh, yeah, I had a really great time uh, and uh, yeah, no, it was uh, yeah, it was like I got to experiment a bit. Um, it did definitely make me hate Adobe Animate because <laughs> uh, like you know. I, I, you know, I, I use that, that software for, you know, the cleanup work I did for has been, it's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> you know, Toon Boom definitely, you know, has all these things, but yeah, it wasn't until like I did this reanimate and I did it in like a certain style that I like, I realized, oh God, I, I need to change software. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I'm very happy because I, I ended up doing two shots for that. I, and uh, yeah, no, I'm really happy with how they both turned out, and that became a like a massive thing when it when it uh, when it uh, got uploaded, and oh, yeah. you know I got a lot of, a lot of people. I I, I, ju I just remember thinking it was well because you know they were only two like little shots, you know, about a second or a second and a half each. Yeah, and yet you know people you know still managed to like you know see it and like you know managed to grab their attention, which. Uh, so uh, very flattering <laughs> and you know i had a lot of people you know dm me and say oh that was fantastic so uh and you know asking me if uh they could uh use you know the drawing of fred i did as their thumbnail on tumblr so if anyone watching is on tumblr and you see a freaky fred uh thumbnail that there's a very slim possibility that i could have actually drawn it there so <laughs> who knows eh <laughs> now again um, also tumblr is a very unique beast as well let's let's be honest <laughs> it's ah, certainly something but that, that it's incredible to 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 see kind of like you know again you said yourself it was only a couple of shots that were not even like you know a good couple of seconds long but yet you're getting all this attention and all that kind of stuff like that is it's not the only reanimation that you've worked on i should say or at least used to work on because i i've been seeing shots that you've been teasing of the animaniacs reanimated that you might be having a hand yeah. in yeah that's right yeah that's one that i'm currently doing um yeah well i'm actually um i'm actually doing two at the moment um i'm actually um yeah i saw a thing about you know they, they're re they're reanimating the pilot of has been so um i'm doing i'm going to be doing a shot for that and i'm uh oh, really I'm, yeah yeah no um i'm I need to get onto that actually. <laughs> I need to... <laughs> thinking about it. God. <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, yeah, no, I'm doing that, and uh, yeah, the Animaniacs. Um, yeah, like 
the anime in Miniacs wasn't really something that really caught my attention mm-hmm. until you know I you know got you know started using social media like Twitter and that because uh, I definitely remember Pinky and the Brain. Yeah, that would be like that would be th- th- that would be like its own separate thing that I'd watch. It would be on like the cable like cable network, mm-hmm. like CBBC, and they they would always have that. So that was definitely something that I knew. But Animaniacs never really was until, um, you know, t- 10, 15 years too late, and I'm and I'm, and I'm jumping on the train, and uh, obviously they've rebooted it, and uh, yeah, no, there's this uh, there's this hello song, um, where they where they they talk about you know the word you know basically the the word hello, yeah. and you know what what it means in like you know different languages and everything, um. I don't actually know, like, the, I'm not 100% on the history behind that because I think I think it was either for a soundtrack or, like, it was, like, a deleted scene that they never really animated. Mm. So this is... It, it isn't really a reanimated. It is an animated. So okay. we are, you know... So we are actually just, like, putting visuals to this song that's been recorded. Um, but, yeah. Um... A lot of people, you know, it's. I've, I've been seeing a lot of the work, you know, being put into that, and that's really, really quite something. So yeah, I know everyone's working really hard on that, and of course the Has Been Hotel one as well. That's uh, a lot of people, of course, have been, because everyone loves Has Been, yeah, and so there are countless people in there, and you know, I've seen a lot of unique t- takes on the characters, and it's been, it's it's really cool. So yeah. I was gonna say it's funny. You're actually the second person that worked on the original has been pilot that is working on the has been reanimated that I've talked to. Yeah. The first one being uh, Magpie. Uh, she she has her shot that already uh, that she already posted yeah. online or whatnot, which I was amazed by that. But um, and on top of that, like reanimations, I think you could attest to this. Like reanimations as a whole, are really like taking off. Like there's a lot of reanimations out there that I'm really surprised with. I mean. I've had a uh, previous guest, Roya Shahidi, who was in charge of the Kirby reanimated. And then my producer, Tipsy, uh, Maria, Tipsy J. Hart, is actually part of the yeah. uh, the Billy and Mandy, like, Brains episode reanimated that uh, I'm happy that she got yeah. the opportunity for. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually, I saw that on Twitter. I saw that being, like, you know, thrown about. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And a few... Because um, you know, I'm quite good friends with with Tipsy as well, yeah. and uh, and uh, or are we? Um, no, <laughs> are we I hope so. I hope so. She might say different. She might hate me. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, mean, hope I, I, I might just pop into the call, and she's like, "Oh God, this guy again." <laughs> no, uh, and, and she uh, and she. Uh, yeah, she posted that she was uh, that she got accepted into it, and no, that was that was pretty cool because I do remember that that was like one of the one of the episodes that my grandmother like taped for me on the VHS, so like that was engraved into my mind. So yeah, no, that was, it's great that uh, yeah, that's a great one, definitely. Um, it, it, it's always exciting more than anything else to to have basically independent animators get this opportunity to really like showcase themselves and like build something for their real. Right. That you know they could turn around and show to people to get hired onto these incredible jobs with these incredible shows. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be using like the work I'd be doing on us for, for, for my reel. Like, I'm very happy with how it's turning out so far. Well, I imagine. But, another, yeah, I'd say I imagine another thing you want to be using for your reel is your own personal, uh, I guess, thesis graduate film, more or less, Puppet the Nightmare Elf. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How did this concept come to be? Because yes. you came to me talking about Why? this concept, and I have been just amazed since you started talking about it. Um, I think like this is going to sound really weird, but I think like the basis of it was uh, Pennywise the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything, because like, yeah, it's a weird, weird, like weird thing. Um, you say yeah, weird, I say unique. I, uh, <laughs> unique. Thank you. No, like, um, because uh, they, they, it was. I think it chapter two came out like at the beginning of third year for me, so about September time, 
like early September and it was around that time that they were saying right you've got to decide what you want to do for your film for your final year film so I had this idea yeah uh, with characters that I've had for a very long time okay uh but the story like you know it was too convoluted for like a small you know two three minute film so I ended up you know thinking look I've got to find think of something else now and I was actually in LA at the time uh and I brought my sketchbooks and everything with me and I just drew this see if we can get the picture up now actually while I'm here yeah I, w I just remember waking up because I was still suffering the effects of jet jet lag I woke up really early like in so so I uh yeah I just got to work on in my sketchbook uh let me see if I've got it here somewhere but this was actually the first drawing I did of him. One minute. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm just very, like, it was just something, you know, off the, off the cusp by Drew. And I, and, you know, once I finished it, I thought, oh, hang on, I think I've got something here. There you go. But yeah, like, I, and like I was saying about, you know, it being in inspired by Pennywise and everything and like you know that thing where like he he just like creates like these horrors that just sort of like like illusions almost mm. and like you know his body can sort of like contort and turn into like a spider leg and everything and I just thought that would be I just thought that was like a cool concept that like he can just create he can sort of like just conjure up just sort of like something um obviously like yeah, to begin with, like this character was just like conjuring up all these nasty things to scare people. But as I um, as I like worked with along with the character, you know, I started uh, developing uh, other like variations and other different characters to go with them. I'm, I'm just lucky to see. So yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be spamming the chat with these. So <laughs> I do apologize. You say spam in the chat. You're just giving me visuals I could use for the podcast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, and I, I I spoke then because um, one of my good friends, Wiley, he's a voice actor and he does uh, he does music as well. And uh, I know you're I, about. I mean, like hmm? I know who you're talking about. He's a I forget what his last name is, Wiley, but he's done stuff for uh, Mayhem as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He's he's done a lot of work for Mayhem, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think he, he did a lot of the composing and he voices two of the characters in there. He does a very good job. Yes, he does. He's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I was just throwing around ideas with Wiley and... Uh, with this character and i just you know then i i just decided yeah let's do something with this character and then by the time i came back then to uni still incredibly jet lagged and uh i was just like uh, i've got books of drawings i've got books loads of drawings so i uh came in and uh yeah yeah no they they, they liked they liked what i had so uh yeah that was like the origins of that yeah i think i have I think I have like the the entire the entire film storyboarded. Um, <laughs> I mean that's smart. Somewhere that's smart. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, storyboard. <laughs> um, yeah, but I have. I'm, I'm going to put in some uh, out of context uh, boards. But yeah, I uh, I did them all on on paper first. So like all these, I bought all these little. Okay. Where am I looking at? Sorry. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> You're like you're like minimized on the screen, so you're like over here. My camera's here. Um, yeah, I had all these uh, like little miniature, like a, like a five, a six, like panels, mm -hmm. and I just, I just, you know, each drawing was a different one, and I ended up uh, with just like these huge, like just bits of card with just everything like in lines and then when uh, and like i just about managed to have like enough to fill the whole like all like four of them yeah. but then i had to add scenes so i ended up like gluing bits on and everything <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh yeah i'll uh show you these are some of my favorites <laughs> that, that first one he says beautiful absolutely gorgeous oh yeah 
is actually the main character. I've just spoiled it for everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> best character. Best character. There but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, these are just some little little you know sneak peeks yeah. and everything um but yeah and i think i had already said i think i'd said to you prior uh that uh yeah i've just sent it over to uh my sound guy uh kennedy phillips he's a very good very good sound engineer composer and everything uh so if you need sound effects or anything like that go to him uh yeah um go. and we should have it done possibly today or tomorrow so yeah that'll be coming out very soon it's taken it's taken over a year since it was since it was originally supposed to be handed in for it to actually be finished <laughs> i mean to be fair you know a, a little thing called life just happened to happen at the very very opportune time i guess yeah <laughs> but I no it was yeah like I think it came to a point where I realized I may not get like all of it done when I needed it to. And I had all these like animators in the second and first year of like the college that wanted to help. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously COVID happened and not a lot of people had the software required at home on their computers and everything. So I ended up having to do, you know, a lot of, you know, it myself, which, you know, is a given, but, uh, I'm an idiot and I like being innovative. Uh, so <laughs> I think the way I, had, the way I, I had animated it made it really hard to color, color it in. Uh, like properly. Yeah. So like, I think the majority of the time is just me going through frame by frame and just going <laughs> with like an orange paint like tool. <laughs> so that's where, that's where all the time's gone. Just a year of me crying, just going, <laughs> I, I mean, if nothing else, it, it, it's, it'd be a nice bit of like authenticity to go with the, the film when people see it at the end of the day. So I can only imagine how how stunning each and every individual frame that people are going to be nitpicking individually. No, I'm yeah, but... uh, I'm I'm very I'm, I'm very happy. Like, you know, looking back, obviously, I've been looking at this thing for like over a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, I, I definitely I can see every single floor in every single frame. But, you know, and there are, there are things, you know, I wish I had done differently. There are, you know, things like, you know, oh, maybe if I had drawn this character a little bit taller or maybe if I had written this line differently, it would have been better. But, you know, it, it just, you know, it was like my first, like, film I had finished. So, you know, it's yeah. not going to be, you know, 100%. But I've, I've got... I've got lots of ideas to, you know, go forward with these characters that I've been, uh, yes. So, uh, I've been, you know, bouncing, you know, these ideas with, uh, Wiley. He's, uh, he's, he's a very good idea, man. Wiley as well, you know, as well as being, you know, a top tier voice actor and uh, composer. He is also very good at, uh, giving me ideas and then allowing me to steal them. It's very good at that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll get like a random producer credit or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> or will he? <laughs> there you go. But I mean, nevertheless, like, especially with all the stuff that I've seen from it, all the art that you've shared, nevertheless, like, the, the style of it more than anything else is absolutely gorgeous. Like, I love how you're presenting this uh, in, in the way that it just the way that looks alone is already great for those who may not know what in the world we're talking about in the first place. What is the premise of puppet, the nightmare elf? Of course, I should have probably said that to begin it. To it begin would have with, helped. It <laughs> would have helped. But, uh, as we've already established, I'm a fool. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, the premise of, uh, this little short story that I did for my film was, uh, so yeah, it's like this little underground world, like a little city and everything and all the inhabitants are like uh sort of based off myth mythical creatures so like these gnome characters with my own it's with my own little spin on it so like there are like all these little elf characters which if anything are more like like little pixie goblin creatures but you know i just called them elves because i'm smart uh <laughs> and uh 
yeah, so like a lot of the inhabitants of this world, world, they can't like, you know, make dreams for themselves. And like, you know, when they're asleep, you know, it's just an endless void. And, you know, they can't dream. So they, they go to these little elf characters who can like conjure up like dreams for them to take w away with them. And then, you know, nice, nice dreams and that. But then there's this one elf character called Puppet and he can only create bad dreams, mm. which is uh, a big you know, thing about uh, obviously it's pu puppet the nightmare elf. Yeah. It uh, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, you know, explains that. <laughs> um, and yeah, like the story is just about him. You know, he's you know he's trying his best, but he can only make horrifying abominations. Kind of like me. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's just the story of like you know him, you know, trying to you know be happy with you know what he's what he's creating stuff like that. Yeah, I so, mean, yeah. I mean, if nothing else, like I said, like the, the premise is amazing. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, you said yourself, you dedicate a lot of time and effort into making this over a year's worth of work, just going into this basically passion project at this point. And, you know, from what you're telling me, like you're hoping that at least just this little film alone, it's not going to be the end of it. Where do you hope to see, where do you hope to take this concept, this, this IP more than anything else? Well, the end goal obviously is, you know, a full like series. Yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see. I've got loads of like, you know, plans for like story. I've got loads of, loads of characters um, that I've uh, been developing. Uh, one of, one of my friends from university actually uh, made a sculpt of one of the characters that I had uh, designed. Yeah, I saw that I, recently. I am obsessed with it. I'm gonna. I'll pop some drawings in now of uh, what the character originally looked like. So his name is uh, his name is Tari, and his his deal is he's just this giant tree character. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, elf, but like he um, yeah, he's sort of like a kid, like the king of like or like one of like the kings. Spoiler of uh. Of like this world and you know his deal is that like he you know looks after the forest and everything yeah and uh yeah uh yeah oh it's been it's been it's been, in, it's, it's been there the entire time i didn't even realize that yeah no i just popped that in there and also style icon i know um hey look man i i try to keep it stylish as well <laughs> You won't. This oh. looks really weird. Uh, yes. Uh, audio viewers um, love you to death. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is uh, the sculpt that he made of this character, which um, I absolutely yeah. adore. It's absolutely uh, stunning more than anything else. I'm just going to pop in there because I can't be asked to walk over to the other <laughs> side of the room again. Oh, for context, I was uh, just uh, talking to my son, who I keep in a box. Your bearded Audio dragon. Listeners. It's exactly yes. It's exactly what it sounds like. Aww. It's very warm. Yeah, it's very warm, so he isn't uh, particularly happy today. He's just like, ah, oh, here he is. No, look at the little guy. Maybe. Look at him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Audio viewers love you to death. Um. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For context, I've got a small, warm creature in my hand. That's all you need to know. Hey. That sounds really good, but you know, who cares? I was going to say, who cares? Depend depending on certain adds, context adds and certain a flavor. <laughs> adds a bit of flavor to the imagination, you you know. <laughs> but yeah, oh, he's, he's it's very hot for him, so I'm just going to pop him on the floor. There you do go. what he wants. That's a scary thought. But nevertheless, like, you know, the... <laughs> but nevertheless, this concept that you got going forward and such, and like seeing kind of like like the sculpture alone is is a testament to like how amazing these characters can be more than anything else, and how beloved they could potentially be. So like your hope more than anything else is that this could potentially be made into a full length series. That is like that is the end goal, definitely. Um, you know, uh, it it all depends. You know, I I hope you know people like. Uh, this little short, you know, it's only a few minutes long, but I hope that uh, people like the characters, and you know, if they like it enough that they want to, uh, 
you know, possibly, you know, put money towards, you know, any future endeavors, you know. Uh, <laughs> that would be, Once again, that would be nice. I got to get the oversized check so I can hand that to you. Um, anyways, <laughs> I don't have that kind of money yet. Uh, <laughs> but one thing, one thing, uh, but nevertheless, like, again, like this, this entire concept more than anything else. And like, just, just seeing what's actually out there. Like, it's absolutely stunning, man. Like I, I am certainly ecstatic to see like not only the short but like what's to come after that because you've got something amazing because i can't think of anything that's even remotely similar to this concept like i don't know what inspiration you had going into that but like other than just pennywise like you said but like still like it, it's it's a great concept well, like, it's a great concept it's a great artwork that you put into it and i can only imagine like the heights it could potentially go yeah like you know like you said, you know, it's weird to think that, you know, like the premise of this was just like this weird little Pennywise-esque gremlin just creating abominations. And it's just sort of like, sort of like come full circle. Like I've, uh, not full circle, what am I saying? But like, I've got all these, all these sort of environment drawings and everything that um, I'm really happy with, which just sort of expand the world and everything. Um I think I used that for the thumbnail because I'm lazy. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I'm very happy with it. So, yeah, I just thought I'd uh, stick that in. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and obviously, I've got, uh, yeah, lots of exciting ideas with this project. So yeah. Don't don't let those <laughs> ideas die because the, the, I, I think this is going to take you somewhere. I'm being dead serious. I'm being 100% honest because this is going to be something. It's going to be something else. And I think that's what the world needs, something else sometimes. Hello, Disney. Yes, it's me. <laughs> One second. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. was... <laughs> oh. Trying to eat my trousers. Get off. It's okay. I'm gonna pop them over here now. Yeah, you gotta put them <laughs> back. You had your fun. Yeah. Anyways, but you have connection to Disney. Hold on. Hello, BBC. <laughs> BBC. Yes. Don't, don't doesn't the BBC have like a, a different kind of like filmmaking program or something like that over there? Because I know that's how like Tomska got a lot of his like stuff done. Like, um, I'm not entirely sure. I think that was something. I that do definitely it. remember. Yeah, I do definitely remember like him, you know, ha having a presence on on BBC, you know, with like a load of shorts. Um, it's not really something I thought of really. Um, I, I think it ended, but uh, mm. I'll definitely check that out. Something to at least but, you know yeah. look into. I mean, you never know. It could give you an opportunity to showcase this and several other amazing things of the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got I've got quite a few other ideas for like little shorts yeah. and everything. It'd be cool to expand on. Um, like, like I said, I just about skimmed past on second year university. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I uh, I had like a little short. Um, that I needed to develop for that. Mm -hmm. But like, it was sort of like us testing the waters with like filmmaking and everything. So we wanted to make a little and like they said, look, you don't have to finish it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But uh um yeah, that I've got like quite a few ideas. Um like I never I never finished it, which I do I do regret because um I had some really, you know, cool voice actors. Um you know, help me out, like, who are both, uh, who are both, uh, stars of the new Lackadaisy short, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. One of them, one of them, you may also know as Angel Dust, Michael. Oh, uh, that's one of the voices. And, uh, and then there was Belle as well, who I think is, uh, playing Freckle. In, there you uh, go. Daisy. Yeah, no, they were both, they were both great. Um, I would like to expand on it in the future. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get some pictures of all that. Um, oh, God, what the hell is that creature? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine a lot of people say that stuff about your art nevertheless. What the hell is that creature? <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah, I've just got some production tests and everything. This was the poster or... Uh, for my film that I never released, so don't 
pay any attention to the release date. Uh, <laughs> says, coming this year. It never did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, it says, coming whenever I finish it. <laughs> Which <was laughs> That's brilliant. Hey, that, that, that covers your tail end more than anything else. No, yeah. this this looks cool. Okay. You you just got a lot of stuff like built up just ready to get going, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I've just I've got a lot of a lot of uh other stuff in the back burner. Which uh Yeah, no, I've got some ideas. So we'll just have to see. I, I, what, would, uh... I, I would love to see some of these back burner ideas come to fruition at some point, because I can only imagine like especially with some of the stuff that you've already been presenting to the world and the, the work ethic and that you already have out there. Like I can only imagine like the, the, the kind of brilliant stuff you've have built up rage just unleash onto the world. Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I really do hope, uh, you know, when, when, when I do find the time, you know, if I do ever get the time, you know, I definitely would like love to, uh, uh, you know, sh sh share these ideas and, you know, characters. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> just floating on my desktop. There you uh, go. I'm just constantly just on the lookout. Um, oh, where is it? It was just there. <laughs> I I'm sure it'll come back to you at a certain point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here they are. Um, yeah, so these two characters uh, I did for my second year film. Uh I gave them a little bit of a revamp, and, uh... Oh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, it's got some weird, uh, Lovecraftian shit going on with the first guy. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? And then the second yeah. one, and, and then the second one looks like a, a much, much, much better version of Jar Jar Binks. Um... <laughs> I mean, that was the character premise to begin with. There you go. <laughs> uh, but nevertheless, like you have all these incredible stuff built up, and you got this stuff like coming out in the shorthand. Let's let's go with a little bit of the the dream scenario, more or less. Let's say I am Big Shot Mister Moneybags. I come up to you and like, look, George Ed George Edwards, it's good sir. You have these incredible stuff. You have we we know that there's a gold mine waiting for you. All right, we want to, to help. We have. All the money in the world, like more money than there ever should be. We have all connections to everyone that can help you make whatever dream comes to life. What would be the dream George Edwards project? Um, hmm. Uh, well, obviously, you know, like I said, you know, a show, but you know, a lot of networks now, you know, they do have like quite a hold over a lot of the shows being made now, which means that a lot of uh, the showrunners and creators don't get full, full creative freedom, uh, which, you know, is a bit shit. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, can I, I, can I can only think of a few examples Steven Universe, Infinity Train, Owl House. Anyways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All fantastic, but, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, a lot more could have, you know, happened and that, you know, they had a lot more planned. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I would just like full creative freedom. But, uh, you know, we, to, to a certain extent, because, you know, I don't want to get over over my head and just create some nonsensical bullshit. <laughs> just sort of like... Hey, you know what? You're getting paid for it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I, I need someone to stand back and tell me, stop, George. <laughs> There's going to be a fire uh, if I carry on. You know? we, we've had this happen with um, Aardvark before, okay? We can't have it happen again. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Um, feature film would be nice. Okay. Like, you know, I'm that, you know. Uh, look at me talking. I'm going to make so many films. Uh, you should. Yeah, no, I've you got... should. I can't. Well, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, like, obviously, some of these ideas that I've shown to you now, you know, I think would work nice as, like, feature film, you know, but uh, that's just my opinion, and I'm the one that made it, so, you know, I've got, I'm a little bit biased. Just a bit. So, <laughs> just a tad. Just a sprinkling of uh, bias. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, get a, get a, get a few films out there. 
There you go. A couple of uh, award-winning series, and you know, I'll be happy. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hey, that's that's a good dream more than anything else. And I think, like, even though I say it's the dream scenario, it's very achievable. I, I, I think you can get to that point. But sadly, let's let's get down from the clouds. Let's get back from the dream scenario. Let's get back to reality for a little bit. And I'll ask the ever so generic question: Where do you hope to see yourself, say, five, ten years from now? Well, I would. I'm. I, I'd be happy to see myself working in TV animation. You know. As I, I, I love, you know, the process of like storyboarding. I'd love to definitely dabble with stuff like that. Um, I love seeing the process, you know, like especially with like the Owl House, which is currently in its mm-hmm. second series. You know, I see a lot of like the behind the scenes like boards of that. Yeah. I I I'd love I'd definitely love to, you know, just uh, you know, do something like that or honestly, any anything in the animation pipeline, you know, I'm happy to do it to do, you know. That was something like when I was in university, I I was I was happy with like any stage production. You know, there wasn't really anything that I hated, except for maybe uh, like you know putting it all all together and you know finding out that uh, something's wrong, and then I have to go back, you know, and uh, like compositing. You know, I love compositing, but like you know putting it all together and then realizing that I used the wrong prop in like one thing yeah. uh, is. <laughs> Fun. but uh you know i i honestly be happy anywhere you know i i love designing characters you know i maybe i'm not particularly the best at it but you know i definitely love to uh get the chance to uh you know get better at it and to, you know learn on the job that's something i'd like to do um and you know that goes for storyboarding as well and you know anything yeah so we shall see what happens. I mean, I'm I'm certainly going to be excited for it, nevertheless. Um, as we're winding down the interview, I just have one last question that I want to ask. Obviously, like, you're fully invested and deeply rooted when it comes to art, animation, all this different kind of stuff. How important is art, not just for you, but for the world as a whole? Oh, wow. Well, very. Yeah. <laughs> Just to put it bluntly, um, no, I think you know it's it's incredibly important. You know, a lot, a lot. I think a lot of people who aren't in creative like roles or like creative positions really do take for granted, you know, just how much like art does for everything. Mm-hmm. Like you know, a lot of you know, you, you get all these stories about people wanting to go into art, but then their parents are like, oh, you'll never, you'll never make any money with that, and then go in and you know go into their house that's just been designed like you know de- decorated you know with you know with interior designers or you know and then they go to watch tv mm-hmm. uh to watch you know a program that you know has been that's, that's taken like a year to make you know millions in like prop designs you know and effects so you know it's incredibly incredibly important you know I I can't think of a better way to word that myself Uh, with that that's all the questions I have Um, I've already showered you with a bunch of praise but I'm going to shower you with more because it's my podcast I do what I want Uh, (laughs) no but it's one of those like I I've certainly noticed your art ever since you've been a major supporter of this podcast more than anything else even before that like I've noticed your art beforehand and such but like the stuff that you're presenting out there is absolutely insane and and stellar and, st- stellar and sensational. I can go on with so many different adjectives. It's insane. Um, but more than anything else, like, I – how do I want to word this? It's one of those, like, seeing what you actually have out there right now is absolutely insane. And – Seeing, seeing, oh, see, seeing what you've already teased at this point and what's yet to come, like it has me certainly excited to see what's next. And if this is the stuff that you're just presenting right now, because in fact that you're basically just fresh out of uni more than anything else, like I can only imagine, like whenever you get your like when you actually get some experience, like in some studios and such, and like if nothing else, like having the experience on your own to go out there and create your own incredible thing, like I'm gonna be one of, you know 
thousands and hopefully millions at some point this is gonna be rooting for you every single step away because i am ecstatic to see what you got going like seriously like what you've got is like i said before it's basically a gold mine waiting to be mined more than anything else so thank you for what you do thank you for putting all the the hard work time and effort into all this stuff that you gotta do and like i said before i'm be rooting for you every single step of the way so thank you at thank the end you of the day. So i really appreciate that and you know if i get there if I get there, you know, who knows? You know damn well I'm going to be plugging the podcast yeah. and, you know, letting them know. Hey, everyone, subscribe to the Postmodern Art, Art Podcast. Ah, uh, you don't <laughs> have to do that. I mean, I would appreciate it, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> uh, I, no, I really appreciate that. No, and uh, I think what you're doing is great, you know. Oh. So, yeah, you've got – you've had quite a few – fantastic people on the podcast already and you know it's been great so yeah well thank you very much i mean i'll say when it comes to the podcast it, it, it's less about me it's more about the people that i'm bringing on because there are some incredible people out there that deserve a platform just like yourself and i think if this is if this is the start for what could potentially be next for you i will gladly i'll i'll, I'll take the credit for that no i'm joking but <laughs> I, I i'll be happy to know that i actually got an opportunity to talk with a, a brilliant animator at the end of the day so thank you oh, thank you Thank you so much. Thank you. For people who may not already know, go ahead and plug yourself. Oh. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, my name's George Edwards. Um, I go by Edward17Art on Twitter. Um, that's where I post uh, most things. Uh, so, you know, I, I, if, if you a few bits of art scattered amongst uh, just shit posts. So yeah. if you like art shit posts, that's where you go. Um, and uh, I'm a, uh, I forgot my uh, Instagram. <laughs> uh, Edward. Oh, it's the uh, same again. Edward underscore 17 underscore art. So uh, <laughs> that's where you get, that's where you, you'll find me. Do you by chance have, so, yeah, do you have a YouTube or something uh, like that where people could potentially see go... Puppet when it gets premiered? Of course. I completely <laughs> forgot about you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I think I must have cut out a bit there. I think my connection sort of uh, Look, we're, went a bit weird. We're, we're talking across the <laughs> pond for God's sakes, okay? The internet's going to be wonky in the first place. <laughs> It's your fault for living so far away. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sorry that I can't be everywhere at one point. Trust me. <laughs> I'll allow it. It's once. Uh, but yeah, well, it's uh, same again. It's Edouard Seventeen on YouTube, or you might you might find you might find it uh, easier to just type in Edouard Animation. That my my stuff normally comes up, you know, quite up. You know, it's usually one of the first things that come up when you type that. So. Uh, yeah, that's where you'll find Puppet when it uh, eventually releases in 10 years, because that's how long it feels it's taken <laughs> to get it done. But uh, yeah, that's uh, where you'll find everything. If, so yeah. If nothing else, any of the links that he just said, I'll be sure to have them posted in the description below so you can find them there. So there you go. I got y'all covered. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any final words before we sign off? Um, Earth is flat. I've already, I've already said that. Um, no, <laughs> um, but you know, yeah. Just uh, once again, thank you very much for having me on on here. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, look forward to uh, speaking to you in the future. And uh, yeah, I shall. Oh, what am I saying? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's very warm. Forgive me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, no, I was, I, I was gonna say. It's funny you said that. I was gonna say you have an open invitation to come back on the podcast whenever you want. Maybe whenever you get your your next film close to completion, you're more than welcome to come back on the podcast. Oh well, thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, it's been fantastic. So yeah. thank you for having me on. Hey, thank you for taking time out of your day to sit down and chat. I really do appreciate it. No problem at all. No problem at all. Anytime. There you thank go. Thank you. There you go. And with Anything that, else? all I have left to say is for the people at home, hasta luego, mi amigos.
Thanks for listening to the Apocalypse Podcast Network. For more great podcasts, go to apocalypsepodcastnetwork.com. And remember, every time you support one of our sponsors, you're supporting the podcast you just heard. 